Good morning. And good luck. And welcome back to Good Luck with Gino. I'm your host, Gino the Ghost. And we're back for episode 25. And boy, do we have a special one today, guys. I got a big guest. We're not going to introduce her until I do my intros. So you know the rules. It's rude to skip intros. Here it goes. If you're on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, here's what you're going to do. You're going to like and make sure you're subscribed. Step one. Step two, you're going to leave me a nice comment about the show and what you like about it. And the third thing you're going to do, you're going to share it with a friend or a family member. If you're on YouTube, you like, you smash that subscribe button with your index finger until it hurts, and then you leave a comment about what you enjoyed. Now. Are you done yet? I got a burp. <laughs> Don't do it in the mic. All right. Here's our guest. I mean, she just needs no introduction. Killboy. Yeah! Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. I mean, that's, and she can sing like that. Yeah. It's so, like that. So let's, let's, let's introduce Killboy. Uh, so Killboy is a dear friend, an absolute fucking rock star, uh, an incredible artist, writer, producer, just overall entertaining individual. Um, we met, I mean, how do we want to start this off? Maybe we talk about how we met. We met in a session, right? We met in a session. Yeah. And um, you, famously hate working with people. <laughs> Is it that famous? It was just to me, because I know. Oh, okay. Because you've told me. No, because... So, I think you told me the first time we worked together. No, because a couple of months ago, I I talked to my publisher, and I was like, dude, why are you guys not setting up sessions? They were like, we thought you hated sessions. And I was like, who said that? I mean, I fully they were like, And they us. were like, you. I was like, how did it get around <laughs> Yeah, but that's okay. That's okay. That's so, just something about me. So before we worked together, though, I saw your um, just your clips everywhere, um, and your your. Let me just gas you up for one second. Don't let your head get too big. Just just fucking take it easy. Soak it up. Um, I was like, wow, like super talented, producing, crazy voice. The writing's great. And I, you know, I met some other people who were telling me about you, and yeah, we ended up working together. And, you know, we just casually knocked off a couple smashes, as, as we do. Okay, no, because we made some <laughs> shitty songs. No shot. Right? Well, we made a funny shitty song on purpose. Which one? Toxico? Oh, yeah, that was a shitty song. Corey with the Girlfriend was not shitty. Well, that was a smash. Yeah. That's a great fucking so song. So what song are you talking about? I don't, I don't know. Remember that one rock song we tried to make? Yeah. That was horrendous. I mean, well, so horrendous I make, that I don't remember. So here's the thing. Here's a fun fact. I actually don't make bad music. I don't think I've made a bad song in... God. Well, I do. Maybe six years. So it wasn't a bad song. Maybe it just wasn't like you didn't like it or it wasn't like a hit record on Billboard. But it wasn't a bad song. We don't make bad songs. You know a bad yeah, song. That's true. You know what I mean. Oh, yeah. You know, once you hit you know a certain a tier, song. it's, uh, you know. Like when you get in a songwriting session and the songwriter's like, I'm a, uh, see, I told you I got a bird. <laughs> I'm a bad bitch. I'm a savage. Yeah. You wish you could have this. Yeah. On the mattress. And I'm like, shut up. And you're like, hey, it's, it's uh, 2023 now. I'm like, you know? I've heard. Yeah. I've heard the word, okay? Yeah. I know. Hey, did you know um, savage rhymes, rhymes with a bad, bad bitch? bitch. <laughs> did you know that? <laughs> no. Oh God. Yeah. Well, that's that's been my curse. Is that you know I had a bunch of hits with like a female <laughs> rapper, and then now everyone's like trying to get me in to do like female rap songs, and I I be in with sometimes with these random writers, and they're like, "All right, I got I got an idea. Uh, we 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 start off with bad bitch, <laughs> right, and then." The Say ass, it with me. And then the, one. Well, hold on. I'm gonna go somewhere else. I got the ass thick. That one was good. You like that? And then I'm a savage. So, oh. <laughs> so anyway. Um, before we get into the show, um, so today's 9/11, and we didn't. <laughs> I know you didn't plan on going. I just had this thought on the way in. Um, <laughs> Today's 9-11, and, you know, there's a whole bunch of just, like, obviously sad shit that goes around. Oh, God, after I just laughed I know, like that. I know. It's fine. It's okay. It, it's, it's been, like, 20 years, which is, to my point, I, I never, like, feel, obviously, I'm like, oh, God, that was so crazy and terrible and sad, but I just always feel old on this day. I mean, when you just said 20 years, I was yeah, like, oh, shit. Like, I literally fuck. was in 
first grade. No. Yeah, I was in yeah. first. I I like. Wa- I remember I walked into my music class. Ironically, maybe this is where I found my love for music. <laughs> I walked into my first grade music class, and you know what? Back in elementary school, and they had those old ass like TVs on the the rolling rack. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you yeah, had that. I know. <laughs> you know. What you fucking talking the about? The fucking yeah. And and my music teacher was just like, you know, and um. And I watched the second plane hit live. Oh God! Which in was first crazy. Grade. See, yeah. they they shielded us. They, we didn't see oh, it. No. I, I never saw in, it. Like we walked into, and then we went home. Anyway. I think to this day I've never seen it. Oh, really? Yeah. How have you never seen it's it? Too graphic. Graphic. It's not graphic. <laughs> have you been in the internet for five minutes in the past <laughs> ten years? It's not graph. It's like PG. I mean, I really don't think. I mean, maybe I've seen it. Yeah, I mean, it's. Yeah, okay. Well, anyway. But yeah, no, they they I went to a little Christian school, a little private school. Oh, they were they, like they didn't show the us. Lord Jesus yeah. will will I cover you in the blood of Christ and yeah. prevent the terrorists in Al Qaeda. On God. On God. <laughs> anyway, I didn't mean to fucking bring the mood down, but it just it just I just <laughs> I just did. feel so old whenever this day comes back around. Hmm. Cause I'm just like and I feel all these... wise, and I feel like just <laughs> better than everyone who's younger than You're me. Like, I've seen a lot. I've you motherfuckers weren't even shit. alive when this happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, all right. Enough on that. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm reco- we're, this is my first podcast I've done at night. Yeah. It's because I'm leaving. This is why it's so bad. No, it's so good. This is great. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? This is gold. This is five minutes of gold. Um, okay. I'm leaving for Asia for three weeks. So yeah. I'm just cranking episodes. Yeah. I can't um, remember if it was three weeks or three months. Three weeks, no. no yeah. No, 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 I was like, three months. That. So, so, anyway, okay. We met. We met. We made music. We did. Uh, we, we became friends. And yep. you were, at the time, you were signed mm-hmm. to a label. Now, mm-hmm. obviously, Is that we're the gonna... only reason you worked with me? Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> I thought, hey, here's a... Here's an opportunity to make money. No, that's not why. No, um, I mean, perfect. But <laughs> Well, ideal- you did make a song with me, and you did not make money. <laughs> Correct. But that's because there's no money in music. So anyway, we we did the, you know, you were signed to Atlantic. Mm-hmm. And we've obviously had well, so many. Well, I was many- signed to APG, and then I was sold to Atlantic. Oh. Nobody even knew I was signed to APG because I wasn't even allowed to tell anybody. It was supposed to be a secret. They were trying to industry plant me, and I never even took root. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? The- Seriously? Yeah, on God. Okay, let's talk about that. That's crazy. So you were I, you were not supposed to tell anybody you were signed. No, I was not supposed to tell anybody. I wasn't, and I was so mad <laughs> because, I don't know, it just felt like I was like the side piece, like the girlfriend that like you don't tell nobody about. <laughs> like, oh, they like. I, they- I was like, post me, baby. <laughs> they wouldn't post me. They were like, hey, I don't really like, you know, I don't like to post my, you know, on, on, on socials like that. Yeah, I couldn't even get a post. Wow. And they said, it's. Trust me, it's just, you know. <laughs> so they want, so the idea was you fly under the radar, they blow you up underground. And then it looks like I did you. it on my own. Right, they grassroots you. And you know what's funny? Is I did most of this shit on my own, even though I was signed. Well, so what's crazy is that's how most signed artists have to move that are publicly, in the public mm-hmm. relationship with the label. Yeah. They still make you fucking do all the work. Yeah, it made really. me so mad because I was like, dude, I'm doing so much. Like, can you at least just claim me? <laughs> That'd be fire. <laughs> well, okay, so so you were you were the the side piece. Mm-hmm. Um but so they were giving you like budgets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got like a great budget and I was able to work with Strip Mall on my U plus me music video. That video was crazy. Yeah, I think it's like fifteen or twenty thousand dollars, and that was so cool. I mean, I wanted to work with them, and it turned out great. I mean, it turned out great except for the fact that I was wearing a Target sports bra because I didn't know you couldn't wear things with brands on it. So I had this sick ass shirt, and I had like a Joy Rich shirt, and they're like, "No, they can't work with that." And then my best friend Jade, who's the other girl in the video, she had this sick ass gothic shirt that had like mickey mouse on it and they were like nope can't do mickey i was like damn because she was she was gonna get it wasn't strip mall the label 
Yeah, so when you're on the label, they have label people there, like oh. multiple people at the shoots, like monitoring, making sure like Nike's not showing on your shoes or anything that they're going to have to pay extra money to have blurred out because oh, they won't. Oh, because they're at the li- Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, so I used to work in film, and obviously like on set, they're super cognizant mm-hmm, of that. And yeah. like wardrobe, you'll never but wear branded they stuff. they didn't tell me that. And so... It, it, it pissed me off because I didn't have face tats. I didn't have a lot of shit back then to be like, I feel like I look pretty cool, you know, now. But like, I just looked kind of normy. And then my friend Jade, who's my best friend, she has fucking dragon face tats and a mullet. And I mean, she's the one that told me to get a mullet. And like, she, like she's got all this sick shit and this cool outfit. And I'm just like in my Target sports bra and I'm kill boy. <laughs> Do you think that inspired you to go get your face tatted and get blasted? Would, well, with that's yats? yeah. That no, I was already getting blasted with yats, but my best friend Jade did. She was like, "Yes, go get your face tatted. Yeah, yes, you can go here and get your mullet done." I mean, yeah, the that's, mullet. That's goes what besties crazy. are for. Crazy. Yeah, I mean, I even back when I had teeth gems, I stole that from Jade. Um, but she was like, you know, bestie, get them. She's from like I don't even fucking know. She's got this Australian accent. I'm sorry, She's like, is- bestie. Is this an get them? Is this an artist <laughs> giving credit to somebody else? Yeah, I, it's my. It's all just my best friend Jade. Am I in the fucking <laughs> Twilight Zone right now? No, dude. I mean, Jade's so fucking cool. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, okay. I, I remember I stole the tooth gems. She was like, yeah, go get tooth gems. You can get them here from Graciela. And I was like, okay. So I went and got them from Graciela. I said, I got my teeth done by a bad bitch named Graciela. I pray to God I stay fly, fly, fucking ever. Okay, so anyway. Hard. That was my SoundCloud song, <laughs> <laughs> Teeth Gems by Graciela. <laughs> Damn, that goes crazy. Yeah. And you had to. And it's were- funny because so many people made fun of me. And then everyone got them. And you know what happened when everyone got them? I took them off and I was like, cheat gems are for losers. Mm. (laughs) Because you're a trendsetter. Yeah. And see how everybody got the mullet recently? But I'm not sad. Like, Jade obviously had it first. Yeah, yeah. But we got to suck Jade's dick on the butt. Yeah, we got to. We get it. Yeah. Jade's a trendsetter too. But just Jade's trendsetter. But I mean, I had the purple crazy. Because she had like the sick, classy mullet. Yeah. And I got the trailer trash purple sparkles glitter in the hair which is a vibe it's sure. my vibe trailer and, treasure and so okay uh, you you brought up something that i actually want to talk about when you were talking about the soundcloud thing so you couldn't drop records so you had to like you were putting stuff on soundcloud because yeah. you're like well i can't drop this shit on dsps like i want to yeah i mean if they don't like a song they're not going to put any money into it and i didn't even really think about that for at the beginning I was just like, you guys are pissing me off because I have literally, I I got signed right after Riff Raff reposted me. Okay, so Riff Raff reposted me and it got like so many views and I was getting like six to 10,000 likes. All my videos were getting 50 to 100,000 views. Like my shit shot up. I got 40,000 followers overnight basically. And my shit was popping, and I was like, I can't wait to give these people the Riff Raff collab. I can't wait to give them more and more music. I have all this music. And they were just like, oh, just hold on. And there was, like, no music for six months. And they said, uh, and I'm not even supposed to say it, but they were like, we don't want to release the Riff Raff collab because we don't want people to see you as a novelty artist. And I was like, Riff Raff is one of the best artists in the world. Like, I love everything he does. He's one of my favorite artists. Why wouldn't you let me collaborate with him? He's like the only artist that has co-signed me and actually put his voice on a record that I produced and wrote my verse on and recorded and mixed him out. Like, and he's like a cultural icon. He's a cultural icon. And they just fucked it for me. And, uh, we, you know, we dropped it as soon as I got off the label. But at that point, yeah. you know, the it's buzz just, is you gone. Gotta, you got to hit like. But I it's think- funny because that would have been my first and only cut with a rapper, too. And they fucked it. What What's tough about labels, and this is just something I've learned, like working as a writer that does stuff with labels or a producer, they their biggest detriment is they're just so bulky mm-hmm. and slow. And there's so many, the chain of command goes so high and yeah. so many people have to sign off yeah. that in this in, in this day and age, you got to strike while the algorithm is hot. 
and there's no time yeah. to be like, well, let's just stew on it for five months mm -mm. And, and build up the thing. Like, nah, people's attention span. They're like, okay, bye. Yeah, they're like, all right, yeah. cool, got it. Moving on. Yeah. And, and, and you only retain. <laughs> Not even subconsciously. There's like a hundred more artists in front of their eyes in the next hour. So I know. they're. Well, even for me, it's like with this podcast, like I have, and I enjoy doing it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it if I didn't enjoy doing it. I'm at the point. In my I know life, you like it. I can yeah, tell. I'm at the point in my life where if I don't enjoy it, yeah. I'm not doing it. It makes me happy to see you doing it, <laughs> which makes me happy. Um, but I'm at the point now where it's like I'm having clips like move, like I'm yeah. like you know the long form. Obviously, like it's it takes people a while to like watch a full hour, and there's a yeah. smaller niche consumer market of those people. Yeah. So I'm getting like aggregate over time as more clips move. That's but yeah. the clips are going nuts, and I'm like I'm I have to continue posting yeah and if i if i slow up then it's just how it works like people move on and the yeah. algorithm gets slower and so it's continue like continue posting continue learning what what people what liked and what yeah. they didn't like and like what you should do more of and what you should just like forget about and, do and, less and it's what like it's what's so frustrating as a writer and a producer because you make so many records yeah and you're so excited about them and you play them and over and flop, over again yeah. <laughs> well, or they just never come out and yeah. you don't get to put your shit out into the world yeah. and it's like this for me has finally been something where I'm like, oh, I can just say whatever the fuck I want and do what I want and just put it out every week and every yeah. day, really. Yeah. And I, it has to be so frustrating as an artist to be with a major and have all these because and I and I'm not just saying this because we're we're homies. Yeah. And that I worked on some of them, but the music it, yeah. is so good. And yeah. it's like, why the fuck do you not want me? Even I'm not asking for a 50k budget per release, but why can't I like? Yeah, I mean, well, our, me and my ex-manager's idea was like, dude, you don't know what's going to be a hit. So why don't you just put them all out? You don't have to spend money on them and just see what happens. But even then, I think that was a little dumb because I wasn't making content and I wasn't down for the content. I wasn't down to play the game at all in that way because I was a really overthinker type artist that didn't want my art to be like shatted on by this TikTok idea that I've opened up to now because I get it now. But yeah. yeah, so it would have been dumb also to drop other songs and just think, oh, it's something magic is going to happen, you know? So um, either way, I was, I was going to lose because there was nobody thinking, <laughs> nobody trying to educate me on why TikTok was important. Yeah. I, so okay i was just talking on the phone to um my girl that was my product product manager at um atlantic and i was like you know it's crazy that like my ex-management and that atlantic didn't just give me this course that i just bought <laughs> and to learn why content is important and why my content's not working because I'm not entertaining. I'm not providing value. I'm just like thinking, oh, you know, what if I just randomly post this and it goes viral? And then I'm getting pissed when it doesn't, you know? Yeah. And it's like, now that I understand it, I'm totally down to play the game. I want to provide people value. I want to entertain them and I want to like find the fans that are going to like my music, you know? But before I was just like, I just don't want to be seen like as a tiktoker a that's, clipper a podcaster or anything that's so fire yeah i mean that is su such an insightful i think like my aha moment too was the same it was the same shit it was mm -hmm. like i was posting these things and it was just like why isn't this moving mm -hmm. or like why am why do i feel like it's a job to do this you know and, yeah and i mean i hated my life i mean i got so depressed i literally got suicidal i had to see therapists i had to get on medication and everything it got so bad and it's not just tiktok it was a lot of feeling like caged in and not being able to drop my art and just feeling like my my future everything is out of my control everything's being controlled by these people who don't even care and who like don't know what they're doing either so what was the I mean, you say you got like you bought a course, but like, what was the the real like light bulb in your head about like your content providing value and like why does that make it fun for you to make it? You know what I mean? Okay. Like, there. Okay, this could get into like a way bigger topic, <laughs> but 
I set myself up like once I got signed with this life that cost me a lot of money. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like that's what some artists do. You start buying jewelry, you start getting big house, big car, like all that shit. And I fell into that. Like, you know, all the validation, all the daddy issues. And, you know, my dad fucking died like two years earlier. Like, on a joke, all, the, all this shit. Okay. So I set myself up for this life that I really can't afford. And it, there was a lot of pressure to keep it and like fuck I have all these animals that rely on me now like I have all these things that I don't want to lose so it was like every time I was making content it was coming from a really desperate place of like I have to pay like five thousand dollars for rent this month like I I have to figure out something to go viral something to go and I was just set up for this like set up to fail like set up to like have to have goals and expectations of myself that are like not attainable unless like an act of God happens. Yeah. Okay. And, um, yeah, it was just recently when I decided to move to somewhere with much cheaper rent and a much more wholesome, uh, not LA lifestyle where I was like, wow, I can easily afford my rent now with the money I make from music. And now I can set small goals. I can set a goal of having each video get 1,000 views. That's my goal. I want the algorithm to, like, I want someone to stay on the video long enough and find enough value that at least 1,000. And now it's like, like every thing has to be viral okay because I want every video to have at least 1,000 and provide people with this like oh yeah there's Killboy oh I like Killboy oh Killboy's not just desperately trying to go viral like she's like providing me with some good stuff and then you can like it's like there's like flowers and shit like surrounding me it's yeah, just yeah. like a fun time now yeah so it's just like taking all that fucking pressure off and you know when people say don't quit your day job like maybe if you're at home and like maybe don't quit your day job that's what i told like my boyfriend and a lot of people is <laughs> like you don't even want to have to depend on your music Dude. for money until it's just like oh yeah i mean my music makes me so much money yeah i could i mean i could talk about that for fucking ever. yeah i just talked about it last episode it's like yo if if you're doing this shit to make you, like to yeah. make a kajillion dollars and i didn't and yeah. i just got a bunch of money yeah and then that was sick but then i set myself up for this thing where now i do need to do it to make money in order to keep this thing and now i'm just like you know what fuck this shit like fuck this fake ass shit i just want to go back to making music and that i love and like making people happy and entertaining people that's what i always did i so. i always and this is terrible financial advice <laughs> but i always tell people when you get your first big check spend it mm-hmm because, first of all, you, A, need to reward yourself. You, mm -hmm. you did something good. Congrats. So go buy the shit you've always wanted to get. Yeah. Get it out of your system. Bec because I'm so over Balenciaga outfits. It. You you also need, you I don't, need yeah. to have that reset. And you need mm -hmm. to have that, like, oh, like, I have no fucking money again. Oh fuck! Yeah. Do I even does this shit actually? Do I actually need this fucking? Do thing? I even like any of these people? Yeah. You know what was so funny is after I got off the label, so many people dropped off, and no one, none of them support me, and I don't care. But it was just funny to see. Yeah, I mean that's and it's like, why was I trying to impress these people when I moved four hours away? Ain't not a single fucking person in that grocery store knows who those people are. That I'm so worried about them liking me in Hollywood. Yeah. And that's that's where you start spending your money because you want to look cool in Hollywood. Yeah, it's I mean, dumb. It's, you know, like for me, my personality, yeah, I'm a gaudy Italian. Like I'm just a fucking. I, really <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about your outfit or anything when <laughs> I was talking about. No, that. no. I mean, I don't give a fuck. But this is. <laughs> but the thing is, like, I love these things. Yeah. And the first thing I did when I got a deal, I went and got. A watch. I went and got the Cardis and the Buffs. I went and got some jewelry because I've always wanted those things. And you know, <laughs> also the fact that you have two matches. <laughs> is just so We're on the same. Like, how long are we even into this? Uh, I don't know. What are we like? Thirty minutes? Yeah, thirty minutes ish. <laughs> I mean, just yeah. we're at halftime. Hit that second matcha. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I mean, just. Uh, but anyway, Jade got me hooked on these too. Yeah, fucking Jade. Love her. Love her. Uh, but anyway. 
you know, I, I think like for me, I, I blew the first check and I had that first moment yeah. where I was like, do I actually like these things? And and then it, well, the answer. Well, check it out. You know what I think that is? What? For me? Yeah. Fish tanks. Yeah. I, I just blew fucking $500 on fish the other day. Yeah. Because that's what makes me happy. And no one cares that I have fish. And, and that's what's. It's but, not me wearing Balenciaga and say I'm richer than all of you. It's like me at home saying I love fish. Yeah. You like that. <laughs> And and I think you need to you need to blow that first check so you can assess the things that you like, and and you know for me exactly it was like do I do I like even like this fucking yeah. pink ring? Do I even like these glasses? Yeah. And the answer was yes. <laughs> they make me happy. For me, it was like you no, know? I like fish. Yeah. I mean, and and, and I, there's I other take things. Tennis lessons. There's other things I like and I spend money on, but mm-hmm. it's like. You need to you need to to figure re- out because if you didn't figure it out, mm-hmm. then what? You figure it out after you've made ten million dollars, yeah. and then you fuck it, you fuck off on all that, and then That's you're like, true. "Fuck! Now my life is over." That's good. And See, it's a good thing that I was responsible. It is. It and it is, <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I just gave you some great financial advice. Go spend all your money. Don't save any of it. Um, oh, I have good financial advice. Yeah. Don't give anyone access to your bank account. Well, yeah. Because my ex-manager just sent himself $22,000 the other day. Oh. Yeah. Really? Sh- shouldn't say that one on the podcast. Oh. But you know what? Don't fucking do that. Oh, Don't God. ever take that much money out of my bank account. Oh, we're going to talk about that off the show. <laughs> for, sure. for sure. No, but for real, no, that is my actual financial advice because every artist, when you get signed, yeah. they say get a uh, business manager and give them access to your bank account. Don't just, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm not, no shade, but don't. I just, mean, I'll- or it needs to be in the contract. Every single thing that um, that goes out and comes in, you need to be made aware of and you need to see the invoices. You need to stay on top of it and don't just let people in the industry like fuck with your money because that's what I did. I was like, oh, well, you guys said you could take care of it and then I found myself without insurance and I totaled an Audi and then <laughs> it's like, I thought you guys were paying my bills. That's what you fucking said you were doing. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a decentralization maxi, mm. so, like, yeah. this isn't just advice for people in music. This yeah. is advice for anybody. Like, as we enter the future, I mean, we're in the future, as we continue the through the digital fucking, uh, you know, landscape that we're all moving into, um, you need to own your your money. And, yeah. And, like, this isn't a, a crypto shill, but, like, that's why crypto is exciting because yeah. you own your money. But even if you're working within centralized systems like, yeah, like banking or whatever the fuck, mm-hmm. yeah, like, make sure people can't get their hands in there because the government can already. So don't also give I other know. people the keys to your... See, I don't know that's much crazy. about crypto, but you know who does? Me. Jade. <laughs> <laughs> can we phone Jane in for the... <laughs> We got Jane on the air. Jane. Uh, <laughs> it's Jade. Yeah. Oh, Jade. Sorry. God. I'm sorry. You know, fuck Disrespect. It. We got Jade on the air. She was the star of You Plus Me, the music video. I'm going to go back and watch okay, it. you got to watch it. I guess, because she's apparently just the drippiest. I'm just uh, plugging my song. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We, 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 I was always bummed that uh, I didn't. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna that was e- good. I'm going to edit that out. Um, <laughs> for sure. Um, so... <laughs> I was always bummed we didn't do You Plus Me together, but we did Corey with the girlfriend together, which mm-hmm. I love. I don't and give a fuck about what your daddy did. That's right. Um, and that's a hilarious story because... It's true. It's a true story. Yeah. Or um, Corey. Yeah. Poor. His girlfriend did break up with him. Do you think it was because of that song? Yes. Nice. <laughs> that's great. But, I mean, come on. If, if Killboy single can fuck up your relationship, yeah. Killboy's latest single... Then I don't think it was that strong to no. begin with. I think we should give some context. So <laughs> you, you, <laughs> this is such a funny story to me. So you you were like, yo, I got this song that I want to finish. Yeah. It's about my friend Corey who's got a girlfriend. Yeah, and I don't like writing verses. Yeah. And you're really good at verses. So I was Thank like, you. I mean, you're good at everything. But, you know, whatever. I was Thank like, you. look, I have this fire-ass song. Corey with the girlfriend, she don't know. And he bought 100,000 miles from home. Many hanging on a Every word I say, and you better just get over it, baby, because I like it. That's right, and that's and we're gonna charge you for that. That's a mm-hmm. ch- that's a charge performance for you back home. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, and I was like, so I had showed him the song and everybody because it was like our group of friends at the time, 
And I, he was like, oh, my gosh, that's so funny. Ha, ha, ha. And I was like, I'm going to finish it. He's like, really? And I, like he's a he's like a starry eyed kid, like from I don't know where, like yeah. somewhere out in America, Maryland, America. America. Sure. And he had just moved out here and he was doing photography and stuff. And I just thought it was funny because he did have a girlfriend and like he never cheated on her or anything. I was just messing with him. And I was like, go with the girlfriend. He was like, oh, shucks. <laughs> And so I called Gino over and he had gotten fucked up one night and told me um, that his dad had cheated on his mom or something. It was some big deal in their family they were going through. And that was I, I was basically like, Gino, what's the worst way we could start this song? And what did I say? I don't give a fuck about what your daddy did. <laughs> and you know what I said? I know your mama hurt, but she'll get over it. <laughs> And it was just so hot. It's like one of my favorite, one it's, of the hottest verses we ever did. It's the best Ooh. cheater song ever. Yeah. I don't give a fuck about what your daddy did. Um, <laughs> I don't give a fuck about your feelings, so then she, Yeah, so then she found out and she was not happy. Not, no, they broke up. Yeah, and then they broke up. But you know what? I, I think he's had a great past couple of years of just L.A. hoes, mm. titties, ass, lip injections, everything. Good so for him. I think that... We did him a favor, didn't we? He should thank me. A lot of girls, because a lot of my friends who are like influencers with the big titties and everything, have been like, oh my gosh, you're Corey from Corey with the Girlfriend? I'm sure he's gotten some pussy And they just throw the pussy at him. I'm sure. So you're welcome, Corey. (sighs) Corey. In fact, Corey... um... (laughs) (laughs) You know, and he takes every fucking opportunity when I post a song to be like, oh, he's talking about me. Hey, it's me. (laughs) Literally, in his friend's tag, I'm like... Okay. Dude, that motherfucker <laughs> owes me, dude. I'm like the greatest wingman he's ever had. Exactly, me too. Yeah, that's a great, that's fucking, that's fantastic. So, but you don't like working with, so you yeah. you don't like working with writers. No. With other writers, except for me. I'm the here's, only one. Here's what I like. I only like working with my good friends. So, like, if I can make friends with you, then I can work with you. But you're not going to put me in a room and expect me to like you because my... I don't know, it's just my demons inside. I just don't want to like you. <laughs> so it's like, we get in the room, and it's like, you're you're all awkward. Not you. That's why I liked you, because yeah. you weren't awkward. You were just like my instant best friend. But some people are just like, oh my God, I want to shoot myself. I'm just like, it's... And it's like, bad bitch, savage. <laughs> and I'm like, shut up. So I don't like it. I like people who are real, and people who can just like, exist. And just yeah, I mean, what's really important for me in a session, I think we did this, is I just before we work, I just want to like talk to you for like thirty minutes and just like talk. I I I don't even. I, that's too short. <laughs> I mean, I'm maybe like, let's. Did yeah. we go get sushi or something? I'm always like, can we go eat? Like, can we go get food? Like, I the thing I started doing was just getting drunk and getting fucked up. Yeah, I don't know if I did that. That I think I did because I remember this car ride with you, and I remember you saying your body is an organ or an organism. Oh, I think in the first time we ever met, I was trying to tell you to stop doing drugs and alcohol. I know. What a fucking bad move, huh? You literally were. You were like, your body is an organism. Think of your body as a cell, and like you're putting all these toxic chemicals in it and yeah. and I was like fuck you Gino I'm gonna do what I want I'm a rock star <laughs> I'm gonna do what I want yeah you did say that's that. another chord with the girlfriend plug that's right yeah. yeah 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 but see that's what I would do because when I got signed they automatically are like okay he'll, your schedule is filled up with all these sessions with people you never asked to work with and I go and look them up and I'm like you wrote songs for Madison Beer. Like, I don't like Madison Beer songs. So I'm like, well, I don't want to work with you. And so it doesn't make sense to me. And they're just like, no, just see. Just see how it goes. I'm like, no, because, like, I'm hard-headed. And, like, I don't want it. But they're just like, just do it. Good boy. Why are you being so hard-headed? Why are you such a bitch? Like, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just like, okay. So they come to my house. And it's awkward. And I hate it. And I have social anxiety. So I just started doing drugs and drinking. <laughs> I'm not going to say the exact drugs. Right. I almost did. That's why I was like, drugs. <laughs> uh, d- uh, drugs. But shit to like, uh, I mean, I don't know if I can say this, but I don't condone it and do not do it. I totally don't even know why I did this, but I just used to do whippets the entire time that 
was just like, let me just fry my brain while you're over here because I don't want to be here. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's so hard because I had an anxiety disorder that I wasn't treating yet that I recently started treating. And I feel so much better and I'm able to do some sessions now. And I'm like, oh, that was the problem. I had a really bad anxiety disorder. Yeah. And you just threw me into all those sessions and I told you how much I didn't like it. And you just kept making me do it. And it was like horrible for my mental health. And I was like, why, why is everybody else getting songs done in their sessions? Why is everybody else have so many songs? And I don't because I can't make anything with when people come over for years. And I had this anxiety disorder. <laughs> and it's like, does everybody not have that? <laughs> like, oh, it turns out. Does everybody not just want to do drugs when people come over to their house? <laughs> but it was a huge thing for me that I didn't realize that, like, I hate people being in my space that I don't know. And, like, I hate having to divulge personal info. And I would try my best in sessions. Like, I... I would overshare because I was like, okay, I'll tell them everything that I've been doing recently so that we can try and write a good song. Never wrote a good song. And these people now just have all these stories about me, you know, and even if they never do anything with them, I have this disorder. Where I'm paranoid that everybody's thinking these things about me. And so it was just like really bad for me. Yeah. Because I'm sharing these things with these people I never see again. And I've just told them all the people I fucked and all the things I did last weekend so that we could write a good song. Yo, that's. <laughs> <laughs> so I just fu- I You may have told me. I think we did divulge your sex life in our session. You yeah, told me probably. like who you were fucked or something. Oh, but fortunately, I'd tell everybody because I was on, I was drinking and yeah, I yeah, yeah. tell everybody everything. But fortunately, we stayed friends. Yeah. So it worked out for yeah. you. Yeah. And I only told a few people. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so let's talk about it on the episode. I got the notes here of the people you fucked. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, everyone. Everybody. No. It, so, it was everybody. So. <laughs> <laughs> everybody that Tana fucked. Really? Your boy fucks. <laughs> Your Eskimo bros? Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. I w- <laughs> you can share it. You're looking at me like, can I say this? Go ahead. Well, no, because one time one of them was at my house. The guys or the girls? One time one of the guys like was at Eskimo my- Like an girl, bro? Yeah. Yeah. He was at my house, and she texted me, why are you at Killboy's house? And I was like, oh, my God, Tana knows me. <laughs> I was like, fangirling. <laughs> and then he got in trouble, I think. Oh, no. My heart's beating fast. <laughs> Let's, let's continue down. No, road. let's not. Let's unpack this. The medication's not working anymore. <laughs> I'm having a heart attack from the watch. I want the viral views. Name some more influencers. Oh, God. I'm just kidding. So, okay, we're, we don't, we don't got to go down that anymore. Oh, man, this is fun. I'll tell you right now, we're, I'm going to have people banging on my line for more Killboy episodes. You know that, right? Let's go. You know that, right? <laughs> It's going to be like the, the the Joe Rogan podcast. I always got like a few guests that come on like all the time. And then you're just going to be one of them because people are going to be. Well, I'll tell you anything. You just got to ask. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I could take advantage of that, but I'm not going to. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, okay. So you were on. Did, so you know, you there's stopped? a reason Machine Gun Kelly doesn't do it with me. <laughs> there you have it, folks. <laughs> got some bad news, Megan Fox. <laughs> I actually ate dinner um, across from Megan Fox one time. Really? Yeah. Does she know that you... She liked my t-shirt. And you were like, I like the guy that you're fucking. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh, was that a joke? Did you actually not fuck Machine Gun Kelly? No, I didn't. No. Oh, okay. I, yeah. It was somebody else. Oh, yeah. Oh, I remember that. Oh! <laughs> oh, remember when I almost fought him? I wrote so many songs about... Can I tell that story? That's such a funny oh, story. God. I mean, don't say who it is. I won't say the name. But Killboy was such uh, a dick. Killboy was talking to this guy. I called him a dick in my song. You did. I called him a. You know, my a, friends say you're a dick, and I yeah. honestly, they're right. Yeah. So I was Fuck at a session. Friends. So Killboy called me like, "Hey, I'm working with this guy, who I'm like talking to, and it's like I don't want it to be awkward. Like, can you pull up?" And this is when I actually first met Rhea. 
my girlfriend. I was like talking to Rhea at this session. And me and Rhea had a session yes. right before, and she was like, I'm going to Bossa Nova Which with Gino. Was, I was like, I love Gino. You're going to love Gino. And she was like, oh, yeah, I love Gino. <laughs> what a great gal, though. I love Rhea. Yeah, Rhea's great. Anyway, <laughs> I'm at, we're at this session, okay? <laughs> and, I come, and so I come to the session, and this guy, we're there before he gets there, and he, he walks in, and he just gives me the fucking maloikia right when he walks in. He gives me the look of death. And he instantly is like, who's this guy that's, like, is this guy trying to fuck Killboy? Or is this guy fucking Killboy? Instantly. Just gives me, like, the, the like, like he's a lion defending Everybody wants his, to fuck Killboy. Like he's defending his turf. And I'm like, oh, God. Like, right when he fucking walks in, he's on macho savage mode. So anyway, you... And this actually makes a lot of sense now that you tell me about the drugs and alcohol. You were like, let's take a shot. Oh, yeah. And you were like, let me kill like, this Like, my tension. fucking crush is here. <laughs> let's get <laughs> fucked. Yeah, and there was tension. Like, he was not fucking with me at all. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. He's like a big, uh, I won't even give any details of who he is. Nah. He's a big music guy. Uh, big music guy. <laughs> sure, or kind of. Big music guy. <laughs> big music guy. But I don't give a fuck who you are. So, yeah. like, I don't care who you are, you know. Not the flex, but I work with some pretty big people, and <laughs> so he's doing this whole like, yeah, I'm fucking big deal, and I don't give a, and I'm in like, you're not, bleh, this is my, this is my bitch, you know. Yeah. He's doing that whole thing with me <laughs> in the first like four <laughs> minutes of meeting him, and so Kilwood's like, let's take a shot. So I'm like, let's be friends, let's everybody. Be friends. And, <laughs> everybody. I, and me, I'm I'm, always, I'm here's the thing, I'm I'm not. I used to get in a lot of fights back in the day. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to fight nobody anymore. I don't even fight. I'm way too pretty. I want to fight. everybody to be. I'm friends. a bougie fight. I get manicures. You know what I'm saying? I'm not it's fighting. It's kill boy, but anymore. it's really just peace boy. I don't fight, yeah, and I don't yeah. want to. So anyway, I'll run away. So you're like, let's take a shot. So we go to we go to cheers. We cheers the shot, and I am superstitious. So I'm like, gotta tap the bottom of the table. <laughs> so we cheers, and I go, uh, uh, tap the bottom of the table, and he goes, yeah, I've taken a fucking shot before. Thanks. <laughs> Didn't he say buddy or something? Yeah, buddy. <laughs> buddy. Yeah, I've taken a fucking shot before, buddy. Thanks. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I, I kind of like look at Killboy. And I was like, I, that's my man, so. <laughs> and Killboy's like, I don't got your back here. I was like, that's my baby. I'm to fuck, yeah, that's my boo. I'm yeah, like, so you get fucked, you know? So I'm like, I'm like, and Sprint I said, switch up fast. I don't remember what I said. It was something like, all right, man. I was like, fucking take it easy or something. And then he's like, some, 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 I'm from Cleveland. And I'm oh! like, you didn't remember that? He's like, I'm from Cleveland. Oh! I'm like, you're divulging too much. <laughs> I don't care. Whatever. Should I not say that? <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. He's like, I'm from Cleveland. I'm like, I'm from fucking Detroit. I don't care where you're from. And then my like Detroit comes out. And now I'm like Detroit versus everybody. And so, I was like, can't we just co-write? Yeah. So then I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, am I about to fucking fight this guy in the studio? Fighting over Gilboy. <laughs> am I about to have to beat this guy's ass and bounce his head off the fucking table? Because I would have. Uh, anyway, I don't remember what happened, but it it pretty quickly. We made bad songs. Well, he just wasn't great at actually making music. Yeah. I don't, I, I'm going to divulge too much. Anyway. He told me I should not tell people that I produce my music. You should stop saying He's that. a fucking loser. Um, <clears throat> That's what I have to say about it. Yeah. But that was a great bonding moment for me and yes, you. Yes, I and, loved And that. a great industry story for me yes. that we love to share. I love to share it. So that's that on that. Um, See, I'm not all bad at collaborating. You just have to be fucking cool and a sick person. And if you have a bad session with me, that's literally your fault. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's I mean, fair, that's I'm fair. friends with some of the greatest <clears throat> people in Hollywood. So, like, you, do you know Foster? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I'm saying. Yeah. Fuck off. It's not your fault. It's not me. It's literally everyone else. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> And that's a good mantra to live by, mm -hmm. I think. I'm not going to lie. I kind of like the night podcast because my voice just gets real buttery. Yeah, me too. I sound like I'm on like a like a like one of those like a radio. <laughs> no, not that. <laughs> You're going to give them ASMR? No, I um, I sound like I'm on like, welcome to 97.6. Don't love. do that. No, please. I could do, yo, I could, yo, fuck podcasting. I could do Radio. That. Radio. We're going straight to 
I don't know any radio station. <laughs> I just made one up. Just make one up. Just 90 oh, something something to 69, something. 6969. Nice. Ryan Beef Chris. <laughs> nice. You Do you go. remember when I did that? No. Dude, I, people are so stupid. Okay, so I saw everybody like getting their song on the radio. So I was like, fuck it, I'm going to fake it. So I made this fake like intro. It's like, you're listening to 6969 Brian Beef Crest. <laughs> Twat monkey, tell us about your new single, Daddy Issues. And, like, dude, everyone in the comments, it was hundreds of comments, like, congratulations. Wow, it's great to, I was here since the beginning. It's great to finally see your success on Instagram and TikTok. They, like, didn't listen to it. But I, like, produced it and engineered it so good that it sounded real that no one questioned it. Just keep running that. And I just, yeah, I just pressed play in the car, you know? I think you should just run a fake... I mean, why not? I mean, it's like as good as getting it done. Yeah. It worked just as well as if I had worked really hard and gotten it on the radio. What's the difference? So I just pretended I did and people got the same congratulations. <laughs> Lie. Lie. Guys, if you take a, if you take away anything from the episode today. Lie. You know, every time I went viral, it was a lie though. Really? Like every time I went viral, I said a caption that I was just kidding. Like, so it was a lie, <laughs> and it went viral, and people were, like, mad about what I said, and I was, like, I was literally just kidding. Like, try, when I did, like, Woo! and I was, like, trying to embarrass my friend into leaving this lame-ass party. I had fun at the party. I was there for, like, seven hours, and then literally the person who threw the party the next day after it went viral had, like, nine million views, and he was, like, damn, like, I didn't know you hated the party that, I was, like, bro, I was kidding. Hey, it's content, my boy. Yeah. Fucking lighten up, dude. Your party's viral. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Your fucking You're shitty welcome. ass party is viral. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. There you go. That's that's going to be the Uh before we go, I want to talk about speaking of content and like, you know, you're you you're very happy, it seems. Mm. Um what is it like post label? Like oh, I can give you the truth. Yeah. At first I felt like a loser and I felt like damn like, I'm almost 30. I got dropped. That was my last chance. Like, I'm a loser. Like, I need to go get a job, like, somewhere with all these face tats. Like, I got to figure this out now. And I was like, I'm I'm damaged goods. No one's going to want me. And then I had, strangely enough, because I don't really like women, because <laughs> I just have, like, PTSD issues with females, okay? So, I was like, I don't gravitate towards them by any means even though my two best friends are females. So over time, it's gotten better, okay? But strangely enough, all these women, like, came to my rescue, like, supporting me, like, some, like, justice from my old label, like, some, like, random people. They came and were like, Kill Boy, you're not damaged goods. You're literally so talented. You have so much to give. Like, you, you got to figure this out in your head. It's all in your head. And just, like, building me up and calling me every week and calling me multiple times a week and texting me and my friends, like, you're so good, like, just giving me this positive reinforcement. And, like, I started doing therapy and I start, I got sober and I started changing and exercising and reading books and everything. And I've changed my mindset now. It's a well, long story short, going around my fucking asshole to get to my elbow here. <laughs> but I'm sorry. That's just what I do. And... And my mindset, I was like, I have art to give forever. Like, I don't care if I'm 90 years old. I'm going to be rocking this mullet, okay? And I'm going to be giving songs about what it's like to be a 90-year-old. So the story ain't fucking over, and you're not ending it for me, and I have people that want to listen to my music. So I just, like, started changing, and, yeah, it's been hard as fuck. And I also fired my manager. I got rid of my agent. I, I started from zero, and, yes, as soon as I did it, I was like, do I regret this? I regret this. I shouldn't have done that. Fuck. You know, it's scary. But then the more I started educating myself and like reading like and and researching online and watching YouTube videos, how to book my own show, how to be my own tour manager, how to, um, you know, do my content better and everything. The more knowledge I have, the more empowered I am. So that has been the journey since getting dropped and feeling like a fucking loser and like my life is over. And over about six months is where I was like, it's not over. So that has really been the journey since then. Um, And yeah, I mean, 
it was really tough to be someone who like was so like wanted I felt wanted and I felt like everybody was like kill boys the goat like kill boys kill boys up next kill boy to like all the Hollywood you know artists like stopping fucking with me it seems and to like nobody wanting to be my manager nobody wanting what I, I was like damn you know it's a bad feeling of like rejection. I haven't felt this in years. Yeah. What is <laughs> like this? Everyone's, I've been rejecting everybody for years yeah, right, right. <laughs> in these sessions. No. <laughs> but um, it was kind of this point where I'm like, hey, I have my fans and I have me and I have people who love me and, you know, who maybe aren't people in the industry for 50 years, but they want to help me. And so we're going to do this together. And so I'm really excited. Yeah. And, I'm just happy that, like, at the end of the day, no one can take my voice and my songs and my personality and and my fan base away from me. Yeah. I, I think the reality is, like, the... the like, I'm perks, an artist. Yeah. So, like, yeah. people like my art. And the perks of being... I don't need money and, and music industry people behind me to make my fans like me. I never did anyways. I wasn't even publicly signed until the EP. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to say the the perks of being ultra talented is that you it's just a matter of like consistency and finding like when it doesn't feel like a job and mm -hmm. you enjoy doing it and you enjoy the entire process of it. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, "Oh, I just need to like be consistent and I just yeah. need to like actually give people this." Yeah. My friend, I have a friend, his name's Dave Sitek and he's literally the coolest person. I want to be him when I grow up. And he's like, you'll never make it trying to make it. This actually wasn't Dave. I just <laughs> this is an old guy that I met the other day. <laughs> but Dave also said something good. But the, this, this random guy said, you'll never make it trying to make it. But you, if you're just having fun, you'll make it. Yeah. And I was like, mm. facts. And then Dave said something cool. And I'll just say what Dave said. Okay. And he said, when you make a good song, you should never be worrying about what it makes you look like because a good song will make the person listening to it think about themselves and see themselves in the song. Mm. And that was actually like a block for me for a long time was like, well, I'm not going to sound cool if I say this or like, I'm not good. That's not something Killboy would say. But sometimes you got to step back and, you know, this is off the subject we were talking about, but this is a good songwriting thing. It's a great topic. Yeah, sometimes you got to step back and say, hey, it's not all about me. Sometimes maybe this isn't for me. Maybe this is for someone else and it will really impact their life or touch them, you know? I would say the the most successful artists have that mantra mm -hmm. where it's like it's not about me it's anymore. It's not about you. You like, you're in I, whenever I say this, I, I can feel the uh when I say it, but mm -hmm. it's an important thing that artists need to hear. You're a product. Mm -hmm. and you but the good thing is that like the way I'm a product I have like shit attracted these flies okay and like now I can make music for these flies that I love <laughs> you're not flies <laughs> but I am shit that's exactly what I was gonna say no, <laughs> but it's like I've, yeah. I've found these people through my being a product or yeah. whatever and now I can make something for them for sure and, and but they found me because I was being myself. Yes. And and the number one thing you can do, like, as a product is be yourself mm -hmm. and keep everything, like, okay, I would, like, I might not say it just like this. I might not say bad bitch. Yeah, I might not say bad bitch savage. But but, but, but they might. But no. they might like it. They might. <laughs> no, but, but I think it's, like, you need to be able to, like, Obviously, not every song can be like, I hate this and it's not for me. Mm -hmm. You have to like most of the fucking music you make. But mm -hmm. like, you know, a great story that I'll keep it short. Um, Max Goose, who used to A&R for Beyonce. He was like, I got this song. The album was done. Mm -hmm. He's like, I got this song. And I think like you need to cut it. You need to cut it. Just cut mm -hmm. it for me. And she was like, I don't like it. I, I don't want mm -hmm. it. I don't want the song. And he was like, please, cut the song. It's a hit. Cut it. Mm -hmm. Neo wrote it. Mm -hmm. And so she reluctantly cut it. And they, she, he loved it. The label loved it. She was mm -hmm. like, ah, 
<laughs> and they were like, put it on the album. Please. It's a, so she put it on the album. It was the last song on the album. And that song was, to the left, to the left, everything you want in a box to the left. And it's a fucking That's smash. like how I found her. It's a sm- yeah. It's like her biggest song. Yeah, and so it's like middle school. At the yeah. end of the day, it's like you know, as an artist, you might not love that song. Yeah, and it might not. But like, if you have a good team in place, mm-hmm. and they're like, trust, like just do this and one. And see, I had one song like that, and my friend Chantal wrote it. And Chantal's a hit songwriter. She wrote my favorite album of all time, "Under My Skin," Avril Lavigne. Smash. And I mean, she's written hits okay and she wrote this one and is a hit I, every time i hear it i'm like damn my voice sounds good on that song but i didn't i liked it it was the only song that the label ever sent that wasn't fucking stupid and that's the only reason it's the only one i ever fucking cut and she was like kill boy no one has ever cut a song like this of mine like of all the people she's worked with she was like this is special and I wasn't even a big artist, which is how I know she wasn't like gassing me up. Yeah. I'm not gonna, my biggest song has a million streams. She was like, this is your song. And I was like, okay. And Chantal has become one of my best friends. And I tried to listen to her. And then my paranoia from that mental illness was like, well, maybe she just wants to get this cut. And maybe it's not the best song for me. And I overthought it. And I was like, you know, I don't fully relate to this song. I regret it because the label loved it and they wanted to push it so hard and I should have just done it because my voice sounds great and now I actually do relate to it. I like the music and I showed it to my fans and they were like, this is so good. Well, <laughs> like, the good news is you just continue to pop off. Exactly. And then when the time is right, you drop fucking, that fucking song. You drop that fucking song. because I love it. it. You know, I think everything happens in the perfect timing. Yes. But that is something that you know, I learned and I just am glad to share with everyone. Maybe, you know, the labels, they're not stupid, okay? Like, they are stupid in a lot of ways. Yes. They they trip over their own feet a lot of the time. But the A&Rs, I will give them credit. You know, Aton, my old A&R, he knows a hit song. Yeah. And... You should listen to. <laughs> yeah, it but sounds great. I wasn't in the, <laughs> I wasn't in the right state of mind to be listening to people telling me what to do. Yeah. So, I think next episode we should talk more. That's a great mm-hmm. thing to talk about, like yeah. labels. Like I wasn't in the out. right mindset, and I was more paranoid than I was like, oh no, I have a solid team. I should listen to them. They know more than me. Well, and there's a stigma that like the labels don't ever fucking know what they're talking about. And you're right. Mm. They don't always know what the fuck they're talking about. But what they're trying to always do make is make money. money. <laughs> they're always trying to make money. So and, and it it you know, the point in my life when I looked at my bank account and I was like, fuck, I need money. I wish that did it. <laughs> you know? And you know what? Um I'm not gonna say who said it because I can't even fucking remember who said it. But they said if a song becomes a hit you end up liking it just a little. <laughs> yeah, because you like money. You end up okay with it. <laughs> you, you can stomach the fact that you don't relate to it. I was it. like, why didn't you guys tell me that before? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but we do have to mention my song, You Plus Me. Yes. My biggest song. So what happened? I was so tired of them ignoring me and saying, yeah, just keep writing. Just keep writing. I was like, what are you looking for me to write? And I literally said this. I called... Uh, Aton, I was like, what are you looking for me to write? Tell me exactly what to do, and I will do it. And he sends me this recording that he's not supposed to send me of Mike Karen talking about the exact formula of how to write a hit song. So I listened to it for 30 minutes, and I sat down for 30 minutes, and I wrote, you plus me. And I sent it to the label thinking, oh, they're going to love this shit. Like, as in, like, suck me off. This yeah. is the worst song ever. Fuck you. They were like, this is the best song. Mike was like, congratulations, you wrote a really good song. And unfortunately, he was right. That shit gives me hundreds of thousands of streams per month. I don't know what it is. And you know what's crazy? I don't know what it is. As you explode into stardom in the future, <laughs> that's going to be, like, your biggest song for your back catalog. It's so good, and I, I do love it. I do. It's a great song, but I would have never, ever wrote it unless I had been trying to follow this formula that Mike made. 
<laughs> well, look, we're going to end on this, but I have to just rub it in some commenters' faces. I have these videos that are going viral right now where I'm talking about Pop Formula and Max Martin mm-hmm. and how there is a formula yeah. to a hit song. Mm-hmm. And everyone's like, art is a feeling. There's no formula. You can't make it math. No, and- babe, because I'm nobody. And, I mean, that's my biggest streaming song. It's like, I'm sorry, but the mass majority of people will respond to the formula. The formula is a tried and true method. And yeah. and But the, the aha moment as a great artist and a great writer, which you are, is I can still be me and make art that feels mm-hmm. good within, and follow the formula. Within the formula. And you know that's how formula. content works, too. That's how content works. Yeah. It's why I'm doing these podcast clips the way I'm doing them. Because mm-hmm. it's a fucking formula that works. You, It's not losing yourself to the formula. It's just saying, well, this is how to get it to the most people. This is how to get your message to the most people. This is the template for the advertisement. And that's, that's, and that's all it is. And that's pop music, baby. There we go. Everything is pop. You got hey. heard it here first. Yeah. Kill, kill, kill. Kill boy. Kill, 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 kill boy. Um, kill, kill boy. boy. Kill boy. I want to thank you for coming on the, the Good Luck podcast. You've you've been an absolute. I mean, delight. you should. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're gonna. This is gonna happen. This is fun. This is I will fun. drive four hours to come do this. Yeah, from fucking Yosemite. Yosemite. Come on down. Um, I'm the Yosemite monster. Yeah. Um. So. Trailer treasure. Do you want to plug your socials here for the folks? Oh yeah, my name's Kill Boy. At Killboy everywhere. Thank you so much. That's right. There, you, there you have it. Um, so yeah, follow Killboy again. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure you're subscribed, like it, send it to folks, whatever the fuck. If you're on YouTube, which you should be, because I look incredible per usual. We got the buffs on today. We got the pinky ring from St. Jules, the Tony Soprano Rolex, all the things that Killboy hates about me apparently because I spend <laughs> money on myself and. Uh, <laughs> I'm hey, just I just, you know, choose to spend it on better things like, like fish. fish. Yeah, that's true. So. That's true. But anyway, if you're on YouTube, uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment. And uh, and guys, I want to thank you again for listening to Good Luck. Until next time, good night and good luck. Good night and good luck. You smile and say goodbye to me, but I don't give a fuck. You hop in the Uber, off to your future. Good night and good luck. You try to play your cards with me, but I'm calling your bluff Cause it wasn't enough